So how's it going, guys? I am here with a review of Limbiscuit Sill Sucks, and that is actually the name of the album. So I did a little review of the single that dropped that was maybe about a month ago, Dad Vibes, and um, I was very impressed by this. It had been a long time since Limbiscuit re released a single. Uh, they had a huge tour plan. That they're a very successful set at Lollapalooza. They had to cancel their tour that they had planned because of COVID, and you know it was very unfortunate. I was actually planning to go to one of those shows, but Fred Durst said, "Okay, to make up for this, we're going to be releasing new music." and it was really about time. We had been hearing about Stampede of the Disco Elephants, well, really since back uh, in 2011, 2012, when Gold Cobra released. It's been about a decade, so it's almost poetic that this album released when it did. So we got dad vibes, and you know, I wasn't sure when this new album was going to be released, but... Uh, it seems like Limbiscuit mostly operates on Instagram when it comes to social media. Now, they do have a YouTube channel, but it was really interesting that he put out a poll and said, well, what would you rather? Would you rather a new song or a new album? And it was like 80% people asking for the album. I don't know which Nimrods voted for a new song. Like, yeah, we pretty much want a new album, Fred. It's been a while. And we had been hearing all these different, you know, takes. And it was very, very strange. Uh, I, you could go back if you want to listen to me, like, talk about it and rant a bit about it in the Dad Vibes track review video that I did. The West Borland told us, like, you know, Fred kept going back to the drawing board, kept scrapping songs, scrapping riffs, scrapping vocals. He was working on the album, you know, far away from the band, remote, like not really doing much. And this was before the pandemic even. So it really became a development hell type of situation you know where a project an album a movie a video game is in development for a long time and almost becomes a meme you know kind of like almost like duke nukem remember when people were talking about that game for years and years and it's coming it's coming but it you know it eventually came later on and ended up being a dick big disappointment well i'm happy to say that's not the case here with this album because I think that this is a really good release. It's a little bit shorter than I thought it was going to be, clocking in at 32 minutes, which is kind of astonishing. But I'm going to guess that they probably have way more in store. They're going to start off this album. I think it's kind of kind of going to be almost like a uh, maybe a weird comparison, but kind of like a gorilla situation. We went years and years without any content from them. And then all of a sudden they came out and they started releasing music pretty consistently. So that might be the case here. Hopefully that is the case. But if not, you know, and this is what we get for a while, I think this is pretty decent. I also am not opposed to having a shorter album. I don't really see the point in dragging out an album. You know, if the band doesn't have any ideas that are fresh and can carry an album for like an hour then, you know, that's fine with me. Give us what you're comfortable with, what your vision is for your album. It, you know, I'm so sick of people feeling like things have to be a certain way because that's the way they want to be. If this is the band's vision, if they want a shorter album, shorter songs, then that's the way I think they should go. And I think this is, works out really well because there's a lot of different styles going on here and you could hear all different sorts of you know different styles that they've used in the past and you know if you just think that Limbiscuit's just new metal and they haven't done anything else you really have not listened to all their albums and what they've been coming out with over the years because they've really tried a lot of different things out different vocal styles different style of, of riffs different tones different emotions different uh topics that they sing about in their songs and you know sometimes fred gets kind of deep in certain songs and i recommend like results may vary for that sort of thing which is an album that gets a lot of hate and i don't think it's an album that a lot of people listen to it also had the uh lowest sales of any limbiscuit album 
like up to that point. So, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about these tracks. So overall, I think that the album is good. I think it was worth the wait. I'm very curious to see what wound up on the cutting room floor because as we know from Borland, uh, Fred wasn't happy with a lot of stuff. And if anyone knows about results may vary and how many songs wound up on the cutting room floor and you could go here on YouTube and listen to those B-side tracks, those scrap tracks and they're brilliant they're like some of the best stuff they even rival what's on the actual official release so let's talk about the opening track here which is out of style which is just so appropriate like you really feel that fred is self-aware this is a smart guy i mean we're talking about someone who went on stage with a new gimmick you know, dressed up like a dad, like an out-of-touch dad, like a middle-aged, you know, uh, crisis kind of dude, and it really went over well. Meanwhile, like, everyone is doing the same stuff and still trying to act hard and tough. You know, Fred's just kind of leaning back there. They've already had the success, and, you know, they, they realize it's about character. It's about attitude. That's what it always used to be. That's what metal used to be about until... You know, used to be serious and like, you know, all, it got way out of whack. And yeah, we don't really have the personalities that we used to. So out of style definitely has that personality. Also the opening PSA style uh, opener right there. You know, that, that, that little line that they had in the beginning kind of reminded me of the intro to $3 bill, y'all. And I'm sure that's not a coincidence. It was probably a nod to it. It was, you know, and this this kind of kicks off the way you want it to. A nice, energetic song to start things off. Uh, then we go into Dirty Rotten Biscuit, and this is a real banger of a track. This is just, I think this might be my favorite track on the album. This is the second song on the album, and it just, it hits hard. You know, you got Wes with the whammy bar in there, just really making it sound like, you know, this is the vibes you got from listening to Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. Just in your face style right here. Just real smash mouth, uh, new metal sound. And it's just, it has a really big sound and there's a lot of grit to it. It's just, it's perfect. It's a really good one. Uh, Dad Vibes is the third track on this album. It's a really um, good song still. I talked about this. You want to me to go into detail about it go check out the dad vibes track review video i still think this is a nice uh sort of more hip-hop-ish type of song but still has that classic west borland riff but you know wes is not going like all out in this song like he is in a track like um like dirty ryan biscuit like there he's really just you know really playing his heart out in that one but yeah, Dad Vibe's still a good song. I know a lot of people were divided. A lot of people on social media talking to me about that song, saying that, you know, they weren't too crazy about it. And I don't really know why. I mean, I, I think it's maybe a little bit different. If I had to really pick an album where I think it would belong best on other than this one, it would probably go on Gold Cobra. It just seems like it, it has that more melodic style that would be more appropriate for that style of album and of course th that being like their most recent album it does make sense that they'd have a song in that style uh turn it up bitch is probably the first song where they actually mention new metal by name meaning that they're like really self-aware uh, this type of song has uh, more of a hip-hop vibe to it it's more chilled it's more laid back you know west kind of uh you know, kind of gets to sit down a bit and take a break on this one. There's, you know, not really that much guitar going on here, if anything at all, from uh, what I remember. Don't Change is the acoustic style type of song that, you know, I talked about and results may vary in the B-sides and the bonus tracks that you hear on Gold Cobra. This is a style that I think a lot of fans don't really know about or appreciate because, you didn't really see this type of style on there. More like well-known works. Like, let, let's be perfectly honest. When someone sends Limp Bizkit, probably the first thing they're going to mention is either Significant Other or, or the Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavor World. I mean, those are the, 
two best-selling albums, without a doubt, with their most popular songs on there by far. You know, and that that is true. I do agree with that a lot. I mean, those are really strong albums. And one day on this channel, I will rank those albums. I know someone requested that. And I, I think that's a really good idea for a video because it is interesting to kind of sit back and now look back at their work. Now that they have this album released and I've got more to work with here, it'd be nice to kind of have a little bit of a retrospective. So if you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments down below because I'd be glad to do it. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice laid back acoustic style song that I really do enjoy from them. Uh, you bring out the worst in me is that quiet to loud new metal sound that was popularized by Korn and even Biscuit did it. Uh, Limp Biscuit really did that quiet to loud sort of thing more on uh, Three Dollar Bill Y'all, their debut album. They didn't really do that kind of thing on their other round they kind of really like if you listen most songs would just go straight into that energy you know but they did it a few times uh but not really as much as other bands did it i mean it kind of became a stereotypical kind of samey thing for a lot but you know it's still a, a sound that i do enjoy um but that initial shock has you know that, that has worn off over the years but it's not really there for that. It's a style that you know I enjoy, and it's good to kind of see it back here. Um, Love the Hate is another self-aware style song here, where, where we've got uh, two guys talking to each other, you know, about how much they hate Biscuit, and you know, it's it. I, this is like a great song because this is something I've talked about almost every single time. I review like a metal album from like a band like this that's controversial that not everybody likes a lot of people hate and, I, and i've talked about this like with suicide silence and asking alexandra and you know and and just it's not just those bands it's just metal heads in general as much as i love this genre of music and this is the genre of music that you know uh resonates most with me i i seriously hate the fans and not that I hate everybody. Of course, I like other people that listen to this style of music. That would be silly to say that. But I don't like the judgmental attitudes of a lot of metalheads and them trying to rank what is music and what's not. You know, like They don't even say if it's metal or not. They just classify that it's not music and everything and you know the musicianship of these people and it gets tar some of the old you know nickelback arguments and that's not metal this is not metal this is more hard it's like we can't just sit back and enjoy the music i think out of almost everything video games tv shows movies the thing that really irks me the most is probably music because the music snobs there's just something about them and you would think, like, you know, the music snobs, like, these would be the guys that, like, listen to, like, uh, you know, indie rock and just indie music in general. And they would be, like, the more snobbish kind of hipster-style people. But it's it's really more uh, a lot in the metal community. Like, I don't think you really have this, in, in, like, in the hip-hop community. And people that listen to rap, like, they kind of like their thing. You know, and they might just say, like, oh, that guy's not good or whatever, you know. But, like, metal it's like you're being judged like you will be disqualified from humanity if you like a band that someone else doesn't like that considers themselves to be like the hierarchy uh, of like metal and, and judging what's good and bad and i know i i, I really do hate that it, it, it's really like the most annoying attitude so a song like this and you hear the guy gets really aggressive when the guy admits to really liking limb biscuit when they were younger even and you know it's exaggerated but i thought that was a lot of fun i really like that they put that in there uh barnacles are really interesting unique song where i really haven't seen them you know dive into this style it, it's grunge it's it's nirvana ish it really has that bite like you, you know just the energetic um uh, power chords just kind of really in your face and even fred kind of changes up the vocal style a bit to kind of get you know cabanish and you know we know that fred likes kurt cabane he you know he, he even has on the bonus tracks of gold cobra my own cabane so i mean we know that fred is in and i mean you know fred obviously we see different types of styles and things that he's borrowed from in songs and 
you know, it, it shows that he does have great taste, that he's a creative mind. And it's nice that, you know, he got a song here that I, I think it really does like Nirvana justice. Like if you're going to have a song that's sort of like a tribute in the style of Nirvana, I think that this is kind of how you want it to sound. You, know, you don't really hear this too much in music in general. You know, it's either like a Nirvana like parody or something like that. But here, Fred's actually going for uh, a Nirvana style song. I think it works out really well. This was a nice surprise Definitely something I didn't expect. Then we've got Empty Hole, which is another acoustic style song, which I it's a short song. It's under two minutes, and it's, you know, you could argue it's almost like some of those classic interludes, and you heard a few of those over the years on various albums. I mean, we had them on Significant Other even. You know, these little short songs that are at the end of other songs that don't have their own individual tracks. Uh, and this was something you could also see if you listen to results may vary on Spotify, where they do break them up, where you do have certain songs. And, you know, I, I like these kind of tracks. I like this kind of vibe. I like the more downtrodden side of Limbiscuit. I think it's one of the more underrated, underappreciated sides of Limbiscuit, as I mentioned before. So you have another one right here like that. Pill Popper. Uh, this is a song that, uh, some other bands have done, maybe not a lot of them, but I could name a few. I, I wrote down a few. This is about like the pharmaceutical industry and like medicating the population, basically, you know, uh, medication is the answer for everything nowadays. So this is something they've addressed over the years. Corn did pop a pill, um, edema. You know, that might be a little obscure for some people. They did a song called Better Living Through Chemistry, which actually predated the corn songs. I'm sure there's many others. I don't know all the others. Uh, I haven't listened to every band ever. But as far as like metal and new metal style bands, that is the songs that come to mind when I think of this style. And I and I think that's a topic that uh, Fred and the, and the gang have not covered before. So I, I do like this song as well. You know, they did it. it. This is kind of a song that also reminds me a little bit of $3 Bill Yo, where they kind of sort of felt a little bit more political, a little bit more societal. You know, uh, now they, of course, have judged society through all their albums, but this one kind of had that more brash punk attitude style where you would have like we're criticizing the establishment in the way how things are uh so yeah i kind of like that it, it does have nods to three dollar bill which i think in a large part is a very forgotten limbiscuit album and you know that is an album that it, it is a very gritty raw album and it has a lot of screamed vocals. You know, Fred had not really perfected his vocal style. I think his vocal style definitely improved from that album. You could argue, and I would even say, like, that sometimes it's not quite where I want Fred's vocals to be, but that's because that's where they were starting out. So this kind of brought me back to that a little bit, but we don't have the scream vocals it's pretty much almost assured that they're never going back to that song. I think that's actually a good thing, really. Uh, we've got Snaggy Poo, which, you know, we get a nice loud uh, chip crunch sound in the beginning. And this is another sort of uh, laid back, silly hip hop style song to kind of close things out. And uh, then we get uh, something that's very reminiscent of older albums they didn't do this at all on Gold Cobra, but that, um, you know, that, that silly, very 90-ish style, this was something very popular on 90s albums. You could see this on, on different uh, albums, like uh, Bloodhound Gang, they're not a metal band, that's something that comes to mind, with various skits with band members, doing all sorts of crazy comedy style things but we have like Wes Borland getting an, an interview with a very comedic sounding uh very stereotypical interviewer style voice I don't know who's voicing that but Wes is just going yep uh-huh 
That's right, and I thought that was pretty funny. That, that was something unexpected. I didn't expect them to go back to something like that, especially when it was absent from the last album. And that is something that is, is 90s as fuck, you could definitely say. Finally, we get the last track on the album, Goodbye. And this is a very Everlast stylish song. If anyone's ever listened to Everlast, the acoustic guitar playing hip-hop Kind of sore. Uh, I'm a fan of of Everlast. I never really listened to the guy, but I have a friend that absolutely loves the guy. He actually performs himself, uh, like at local bars, and and he plays in the style of Everlast. And it's you know it's quite endearing to be that inspired by somebody. But I, I like this track. I mean, I like going out on the low note here. You know, they could have just had Wes go crazy and Fred go nuts and just kind of play themselves off but you know they don't really ever do that too much when you think about it on past albums they've always kind of mellowed out at the end and, and i always like that style i mean you want to go off with a bang sometimes but sometimes it's nice to just have a nice little melodic song to end things and uh that was you know, really enjoyable I, I like these styles here of like you know you got everlast and nirvana and i'm definitely getting those vibes and maybe on the last track i'm i'm pretty sure about the nirvana one but i'm pretty sure on the last track uh you know that that is what they're going for but maybe maybe not you know but i kind of was getting everlast vibes from it so yeah overall i thought this was a really great album i think the show stealer as i said was dirty ryan biscuit for me that was a lot of fun a lot of speaking of fun a lot of fun little tracks you know little jokes and digs thrown in there a lot of pop culture references you know we even had a little bit of societal commentary i thought this was a really satisfying album well there you have it guys it was definitely a great treat to have this album to listen to sooner than expected and guys let me know what you thought in the comments down below if you have already listened to the album and um i'll be interested to know what your thoughts on you know let me know if was this something that you did like just like me or or did you hate it was it something that you just really didn't care for i'd be curious to know and please subscribe if you haven't already click the bell so you get all notifications when i post all my new videos i want to thank all my patrons for your continued support and thanks again guys I will see you next time.